My tongue is a Uzi. My dick is an AK. My tongue is a Uzi. My dick is an AK. My tongue go brrrr. This is an extremely testosterone-driven, machismo environment. You can't say, I'm scared. It's a survival style of riding. The fine points come later. In the beginning, you hold on. You stay on the best you can. If you have a little pony and that's all that's available for you to ride, that's what you ride. If you have a horse that's very advanced and you want to go out with everybody, well, you better figure out how you're going to get this horse down the road. I was really scared when I first got around them because I didn't know like what was they going to do. But now it's like riding a bike now, riding a horse, like real easy to do. I like to ride and sit nice and just go smooth like a Cadillac. Come on, come on, come on. It's like horses be running through my veins like I'm a horse junkie or something. The first time I seen the horses, I was in a playground and I was just playing around and they were just riding horses and I'm like, horses, what? I followed them all the way down to the stable and when I got there, I met Ellis. Then he taught me how to ride. I was about 12 when I started going down there and I'm 25 now. Urban riding somewhat comes from our working history in the city. People are often shocked that African Americans ride horses, almost forgetting history that it makes perfect sense that they would ride horses. Those were the people who were cleaning streets, delivering ice, doing those jobs. So these are people who took care of animals. <laughs> A lot of the horse stables were warehouses. When the industry left in like the mid 70s, a lot of these buildings were left vacant. Those buildings were great for us because a lot of them had lots. A lot of them were close to the park. So we were able to take those buildings and convert them into stables and make them functional again. Bring that horse It was cool to be a cowboy throughout the 50s and 60s and the 70s because Westerns dominated television in the United States. And it influenced grown men and children to want to live this lifestyle. And it developed a community of people which has been passed on from generation to generation to generation. The horses is my life. It's almost like they can talk to me and I know what they need or what they want. I had an opportunity to work at the racetrack to exercise racehorses. And I also had an opportunity to become a mailman. So I wound up becoming a mailman because you're guaranteed a paycheck every two weeks. This is a point for me to have a stable job because I have a goal being around horses all day. A lot of times I want to just lead the mail right in the truck and walk home. But I just think about my horse and I just keep working. Sometimes you gotta suffer before you can achieve what you want. North Philly is dangerous, fun, and scary at the same damn time. All in one, because it's like, you can have fun, and then later on you'll hear gunshots, like, oh, what's going on? Like, yeah, somebody just got shot, go in the house. <laughs> no more fun.
<laughs> people get murdered, raped, all type of stuff. Like, it's real crazy. It's crazy when you come down here. Fletcher Street has just always been that place you can get away wherever you're trying to run from. Guys can smoke on there, they can drink on there. You're gonna be okay. There's no cops, nobody's gonna shoot you. I mean, we're in one of the worst areas in the city. When you go to Fletcher Street, if you see 20 people, only five people ride horses. The rest of them are associates. They always want to hang with the mobsters, but they're really not. You know, they're just like wise guys. The dialogue is vulgar. And to an outsider, you think we all hate each other. That's because this is our safe haven. We can say whatever we want, how we want. If we want to fight, we're going to fight. No one else outside can get in it. And we're all going to be hanging out here tomorrow anyway. Maybe a week or two we don't speak, but we're all going to come back home. The horses have saved so many of these young guys' lives because the pull of the streets, that lure of the fast money in the streets is very strong, and it's right next to the stable. Sometimes it's right at the stable. And it's given guys an option. It's given them an outlet. I was a bad, bad boy, and when I was 11, I was smoking weed. I used to hang with a whole lot of bad people, so it was like, it wasn't like we was bored, we needed something to do. So we found something to do. We'd drive real cars in the playground and play bumping cars, like try to flip the cars over. <laughs> like, we was crazy. The horses calmed me down. That really took my mind off this bad stuff I was doing. And I didn't realize I stopped it because the horses took over. If it weren't for the horses, I'd probably really be in trouble. Like somewhere dead or locked up. I basically stabbed my mind because I'm trying to save my money. It can be stressful at times because her door always open for almost everybody. Sometimes I just need my alone time to get away from everything else going on in my life. So riding the horse by myself and going to a hotel by myself, that's my recovery period. That's why I like going alone. I had a lot of bad experience with people. Every time I put my trust out, somebody close to me, they they can try to get over on me. A lot of people take my kind heart for my weakness. You can't trust them. It's like you can trust your horse. <laughs>